This is lecture 3 in mechanism design. I forgot to press the record button for quite a few minutes early on in the in the beginning of the lecture. So this is a re-recorded voiceover over a still frame of the whiteboard as it was in the beginning of the lecture. Last week we considered the mechanism design problem in its most general form. In particular, we formulated what the environment is in which we operate. And this environment is what I will refer to from this point onwards as the general setting. In this general setting, we have some number of players. Players have their respective types, jointly distributed with some distribution f of theta, which is arbitrary. There is also an arbitrary set of outcomes x and an arbitrary collection of, of payoff functions, ui. And given all this arbitrary environment, we had some goal, which is to implement some, once again, arbitrary social choice function f of theta. And the question that we considered last week was, is f of theta implementable, in dominant strategies in particular? And we considered one simple answer to that, which is, you only need to look at direct revelation mechanism to find out whether f of theta is implementable or not. If the direct revelation mechanism implements f of theta, then you have your mechanism already. If the direct revelation mechanism does not implement f of theta, then no other mechanism will. And this was the, our main takeaway from last week. This week, we will consider a slightly different question. Namely, we will ask, well, what if our desired allocation is, our desired social choice function is not immediately implementable, but we have some extra aspect of the environment that we can tap into. Namely, we have access to monetary transfers uh, to incentivize players. So, we introduce what I will refer to as quasi-linear setting. The initial elements of this quasi-linear setting are just as before, so we have some collection of players who have some respective types, theta. So this first part is the same as in general setting before. However, now we impose some extra structure on our set of outcomes. So rather than the set of outcomes x being a generic set, we now split it into two dimensions. And we will say that any generic outcome x is a pair of k and t. k here is a real outcome, or an allocation as I will call it. So this is what we took to be the outcome up until this point. It is the decision that is made by the mechanism. Who gets the item? Do we implement the uh, public project? Which decision do we take as a society? This kind of decision. T, however, is the new element. T would prescribe the transfers to or from different players. So this is the amount of money that these players must uh, either pay or be paid to by the mechanism. Now this separation of outcomes, this structure that we impose on outcomes, is worthless unless we couple it with some structure on players' payoffs. And this is exactly what we do as well. Now I realize this might be a little difficult to read. And it will not help that much if I zoom in here. But what we assume in this quasi-linear setting is that the payoffs, the payoff functions ui that previously depended on outcome x and the whole type profile theta, we will assume that these payoff functions are quasi-linear in payoffs. Namely, they can be represented as the sum of some real utility vi that only depends on the allocation k of theta and the player's own type theta i. 
So we also adopt the restriction that uh, players' preferences only depend on players' own type and not on other players' types. Okay, so we assume that player I's utilities can, can be split into this real utility VI that only depends on the allocation implemented K, but does not depend on the transfers that the players receive. And transfers at the same time enter the utility additively. So there is a linear term TI of theta. And we say that TI of theta is the amount of money that player i pays to the mechanism there is some ambiguity in the literature with, with respect to the signs so in some textbooks you will see this ti entering utility function with a minus in some textbooks it will be a plus and all other signs will be reversed it is a matter of convention in this course i will try to stick with the minus so ti will always be amount the amount of money that players pay to the mechanism but this ti can of course be negative Th this linearity assumption on transfers is actually quite powerful it imposes a lot of structure on preferences namely first of all it assumes that players are risk neutral namely that the marginal utility of money is constant so here it's fixed at one and this marginal utility is uh, not dependent on the size of the transfer while with risk averse agents this marginal utility would have been decreasing furthermore this marginal utility of money is the same across agents across agents types and it does not depend on the allocation k of theta that we are implementing you can come up with examples of settings in which all of these are reversed. So some of these assumptions that are implicitly made by adopting this payoff function are violated. But nonetheless, this is the payoff function that we will be assuming in the quasi-linear setting. Finally, we say that there is some social choice function f of theta that we want to implement. And this quasi-linear setting, a social choice function, prescribes k of theta and allocation and some profile of transfers ti to tn so these will be transfers to every agent all of these terms of course depend on the type profile theta sorry so we now have this quasi linear setting which imposes a lot more structure than we had in the general setting before now and the question that you can ask in this quasi-linear setting in general is can we implement any given social choice function f of theta so given some social choice function f of theta is it implementable or not the answer would be pretty much the same just look at direct revelation mechanism and see whether it is implementable or not but let us now focus our attention on the efficient outcomes. And let us see how we can alter this question, how we can weaken this question to allow for more possible answers, and what kind of answers we can provide to it. The question that we will be asking for today, for today's lecture, is how can we implement the efficient outcome x star of theta or you can frame it as an efficient social choice function f star of theta it does not really matter first of all what is the efficient outcome x star of theta we will define x star of theta as the outcome that maximizes the sum of utilities of all players so if it is an arg max of the sum of all players UIs. Note in particular that we include i equal to zero in this sum, so we include the designer and this can capture the designer's preferences or social preferences that are not captured by any individual player and we'll talk a little bit more about this later. 
So the efficient outcome is the one that maximizes the discounted, this not discounted, this sum of utilities. And this is the standard measure of welfare in economics. If we plug in our utility functions and the structure we now have on X on the set of outcomes, we can reframe this problem as that of finding an argmax over all possible I again realize that it's hard to read, and as we've made sure, zoom does not really help it. Argmax over allocation rule k of theta and transfers t1 of theta to etc. tn of theta, so transfers for every player. Argmax over these variables of the sum of the real utilities vi of k of theta and every vi also depends on theta i on player i's preferences minus the sum of transfers to all players the next question is what can we tell about the efficient outcome just by looking at this expression First of all, we can say that the efficient allocation k star of theta and the efficient transfers t star of theta can be defined, can be determined independently of one another. Because in this expression that we have here, in the objective function, k only enters the first term, the first sum, while transfers ti only enter the second term so we can choose k to maximize the first term and then we can choose t's to maximize the second term with the allocation k the question is relatively simple we can take k star of theta to be the maximizer of this sum of utilities of all players including the designer and we will call this k star of theta the efficient allocation With transfers, however, the question is a little more intricate. First of all, if we simply want to minimize this sum, because it enters with a minus in our objective function, if we want to minimize the sum of transfers for all players, and transfers can take any real value, so ti of theta is a real number, it can be positive or negative, but it can be anywhere in the real line. If this is the only restriction that we impose, then we have a trivial solution to this problem. Namely, just set all ti's to negative infinity. Give every player infinite amount of money. This is obviously not a feasible solution, not a sensible solution to our problem. The problem with giving every player money, including the designer, I should point out, is the question of where does this money come from? Namely, our designer is the entity that is beyond the mechanism. So you would think that if there is any surplus or any deficit of money Pro de uh, generated by the mechanism, it should be absorbed by the designer. So this is exactly what we will assume. We will say that T0 of theta, the transfer of the designer, must be exactly the counterbalance for the sum of all players' transfers, all other players' transfers. So if we have two players and they all pay 100 kroner to the mechanism, then our designer receives 200 kroner and uh, this is the designer's transfer. In particular, we always require, we will always require from this point onwards, that the sum of transfers over all players will sum to zero. Now, even with this requirement, we do not really know what the efficient transfers t star of theta will be. 
what t star of theta will be the efficient outcome here. Because the other problem that we have here with minimizing this sum of transfers is that the solution is indeterminate. Even once we have the requirement that the sum of transfers must be exactly zero, we do not really know how this sum of transfer, how these transfers will be allocated between the players and the designer. So we have the conclusion that the efficient transfer rule is indeterminate and we will not be focusing on it. So the question is how can we implement the efficient allocation k star of theta? And here the transfer rule t of theta will be our instrument rather than the objective that we want to achieve. So we will not be targeting any kind of fixed transfer rule but rather we'll be using transfers to support the efficient allocation. Now let's continue from here. How can we implement the efficient allocation case star? So what do we need to do? Uh, what we as designers want is designer's objective is just to maximize the sum of i from 0 to n di of k theta. What does every given player want to do? Player i's objective is to maximize the i of k and theta uh, minus ti. We want to align these two incentives. That is our idea. We want to we want players to have the same objective as the designer. How do we do it? It's relatively immediate from this picture, right? You see that the designer's objective does not depend on T, on transfers. So transfers are an instrument to achieve the effective, the efficient K rather than the objective in itself, as I mentioned already. So we can set transfers to exactly the difference between the two objectives. So we can set transfers to be minus the sum of everyone else's real utilities, given the player's report. And so if we do that, player i will be effectively maximizing the same objective function as the designer, so the player will want, will want to select the efficient allocation. So let's now formalize this idea. Let's write this problem more formally. Or more formally. Player I maximizes real utility VI of the allocation that depends on theta I minus theta I. So this is K star. We already know that at this stage. Minus TI of theta I theta minus I. So here I kind of yeah, glossed over the fact what is our maximization variable. Here you can already kind of infer from the problem we wrote before that this is K. So we want the designer wants to select the optimal allocation. But what do the players choose? They choose to report a type. Exactly. So they choose which type they report. And why is that? Because the revelation principle still works. Because it is enough for us to consider direct revelation mechanisms. So we need to look at a mechanism in which every player reports their type, and then some K and T are implemented. So player I has some true type theta I, but they can misreport their type to be any theta hat I. And this will affect the allocation K, K star. 
and this will affect the payment that this player gets. So ti will also be a function of theta hat and theta minus i. And so player i maxim maximizes over report theta i hat. Now, does this theta i have a hat? No. Why? Exactly. This is his true type. And his utility di depends on his true type and not what he pretends his type to be. All right. Cool. So this is the problem of player i. And now I give you the second cool result. So we can select this ti, as I said, to be the minus sum of everyone else's real utilities. So let's do exactly that. And this is what is called groves transfers, or what I call groves transfers. After said groves, who came up with them 40, 50 years ago, somewhere between 40 and 50. Groves transfers. Ti g of theta will be equal to minus the sum of let's say j from 1 to n, j not equal to i. Sorry, from 0 to n, of course. Over d j of k star of theta i theta minus i theta i. That's right, thank you. That's theta j. Plus some h i of theta minus i. So forget about this latter term so far, for now. This is exactly the sum of everyone else's utilities, right? Now a trick question to see whether you're following it or not. Do we need hats here? Do we need a hat of theta i here? So our transfer i is part of the mechanism, right? It's part of the machine. And this machine does not know what are the true types and what are the reported types. It only knows what the players reported. And the machine will just assume, will base its decision on, it, on these reports. So it will take these reports, theta, and it will pay everyone this amount, um, and that's it. So if you really want, all of these thetas have hats. This is another way to write it. Because these are all reports, so then the efficient allocation is based on these reports. The machine assumes that all players have utilities with hats here, and this HI will also depend on hats. Okay, so that's settled, that's good. And now let's plug these transfers back into player i's problem and verify that they actually did the job. Player i's objective is now, again, maximum over theta hat i from vi of k star theta hat i theta minus i theta i minus the transfer so plus this sum plus the sum i will just write j not equal to i But I will mean, of course, this indexation. I'm just too lazy to write it all. So Vj of k star of theta i, theta minus i, theta j, minus hi of theta minus i. No, I made a mistake here. Can anyone see the mistake? I want hats. I need my hat here. Because C player I's report is actually what this mechanism will base its decision on. So, 
just to emphasize, what does the player's decision affect? What does player I's report affect with these gross transfers? So you see that theta I hat is here, and theta I hat is here, and that's it. Well, no, okay, this is no hat. So theta I hat, player, player's report, only affects which decision k star is implemented, which allocation k star is implemented. But it does not affect anything else. So if we rewrite this objective in a slightly different way, we can just say that this is a max over theta i hat of the sum of i from 0 to n, let's say for j from 0 to n, because we are looking at player i's problem, dj k star theta hat i, theta minus i, theta i, minus hi, theta minus i. So I collapsed these two first terms into one sum because they belong there together. So player i will choose the report theta i had to maximize this sum overall possible reports. This is theta i. The, this no, no, is theta j, theta j, theta j. You're right, you're right, you're right. I'm wrong. Theta j. Yes. So, player I will choose this report to maximize. To, in order to select the case star which maximizes this whole sum, so you can already see that player I will have an incentive to make a report which will maximize the everyone else's utility, which will maximize welfare. But this is exactly what K-star does if everyone reports truthfully, so player I will have an incentive to report truthfully. So my claim here is that growth transfers support or implement, I am not settled on the terminology, they support the efficient allocation K-star. Meaning that the joint mechanism K-star TG is dominant strategy incentive compatible. That is my statement. Um, direct revelation mechanism given by k star of theta and tg of theta is dominant strategy incentive compatible um, for any functions hi. So, a very shortened, not completely formal proof. We know that k star of theta maximizes the sum, let's say j from 0 to m, vj of k and theta j. Meaning, kind of going back to our problem, if this is player i's objective function, and if player i could choose any outcome k to implement, any allocation k to implement, or could choose any allocation k, he would choose exactly k star of theta. So I said more proof, more of the proof than I wrote. Um, but this directly implies that k star of theta i and theta minus i is, or I guess we can also write inclusion, the arg max over the report theta i hat of the j k star of uh, theta i hat theta minus i theta j. And this, of course, since we're maximizing over reports, our maximizer is not an allocation, but it is a report, and this is a truthful report. Okay, so our claim <coughs> is that we now have transfers to implement the efficient allocation. And we should be happy, right? Let us consider an example 
which will illustrate that we, even if we are happy, we should not be. In particular, consider the following example. It will be a very simple public project example. And the story is as follows. Uh, Denmark decides whether to build the moon base. And it conducts a referendum where each, uh, each citizen can state their valuation for the moon base. And so if it's high, if, this, if it is efficient to build the moon base, it is built. So uh, example, moon base. I was too lazy to think of appropriate numbers, so the numbers will be kind of random. We have uh, 7 million people. So our 7 million citizens decide whether to build a moon base that costs uh, I said 500 million kroner. This is the number that's most fantastic here. It's ridiculously cheap, right? But say we hitchhike on, on the Starship when it flies to Mars, or just ask them to stop by the moon, and then you get some camping gear and AliExpress, so reasonable budget for tiny small moon base. And then we'll say that every citizen has valuation theta i for the moon base and quasi-linear utility. And so just to fix the uh, notation, let's denote this decision on whether to build the moon base or not by k, as we did. So k can be either 0 or 1. Either we do it or we don't. All right. I will have two questions for you. Calculate, first of all, the efficient allocation k star of theta. So given reports of all citizens, should we do it or not? So I want you to write it formally. k star of theta is this, if this, that, if that. The second question, the more interesting one, will be um, calculate the growth transfers, Tg, if we live in a world in which all citizens fate i are at 100. So every citizen, each of 7 million citizens, values the moon base at 100 kroner. So it's kind of cool, but it's maybe not too cool. Okay. Uh, and of course, we're still ignoring hi, or theta minus i. I will not tell you what it is. So set hi of theta minus i to 0. And... That's it.